Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat. We had an awesome one today and I'm here with our special guest. Please welcome Zach Spuckler. Hey Zach, how are you? Hey Madeline, I'm good, how are you? I'm great, wow, what a chat we had today. It was like on fire, oh my gosh. So much fun. Yeah, well we have such an awesome community, very engaging as, as I'm sure you saw. Yeah. And uh, great conversation today talking about Facebook marketing. It's interesting because, you know, everybody's like, oh, I know how to do Facebook, but not really, you know, <laughs> like when it comes to marketing, there's a lot of strategies and you are sharing things that even a lot of our seasoned marketers that were on the chat were like, wow, that's great info. You know, like they were really impressed. So, um, so I love that now we can come on here and do the live stream and get your more expanded thoughts on uh, these questions. Uh, but before we dive in, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So my name is Zach Spuckler. My company is Heart, Soul and Hustle. And we work mostly with digital-based businesses to help them leverage their reach with Facebook advertising. And we also do some digital product launches as well. So if you've got digital products or services that can be leveraged online, that's like our target market. That's who we work with the most. Um, I've been do running Heart, Soul & Hustle for almost three years now, uh, but I've been online in kind of the marketing space for, gosh, almost 10 years now. I've just been studying online marketing and digital marketing, pay-per-click advertising, I've done everything from direct sales to website flipping to Facebook ad consulting to Facebook ad management. And uh, it's led me to where we are now and, and I, I have a good time doing it. So that's just the, the elevator pitch answer. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I have, uh, have uh, spent some time in your program that you offer your membership program and it is phenomenal. You really provide a lot of great value. It's really Thank impressive. You. Thank you. And I've always wanted to ask you, how did you come up with Heart, Soul, Hustle? Like, how did that name come about? Yeah, so Heart, Soul, and Hustle came about because we are founded on this belief that you can do anything with heart, soul, and a little bit of hustle. So that's where the name comes nice. from. I love it. That's awesome. And that's so true. I love that. Um, okay, so our topic today is Facebook Marketing 101. And uh, let's start with question number one, what is your advice for businesses that are just starting to set up their first Facebook ad campaign? Yeah, so like I said on, on Twitter, and we can go deeper into it, which I love, is that you really need to have a goal or a metric that you're trying to hit. So one of the biggest things that we see happen with people in our audience, in our community, in our courses, is that they are like, well, I'm running ads and I'm getting this kind of cost, is that good? And we kind of say that's backwards. You should already know what a good cost is before you're going into your advertising. And it's really based on what works for your business. So what is a lead worth to your business? What is a purchase worth to your business? You know, one of my favorite examples is Netflix. And what's funny is Netflix is willing to pay over $100 per lead, um, even though it's only $7.99 a month, because they know that once somebody signs up for Netflix, they like, never leave. I've never right. talked to anybody that's canceled their Netflix account in my life. Never. Um, so it's like, you know, what is a lead or a purchase actually worth to your business versus saying, you know, I'm going to run ads and see what I can get my cost to be. So working from that goal or metric is really like the gold standard, in my opinion, to get started. Yeah, great, great information, great advice. Um, so question number two, how can new businesses use Facebook when creating a mailing list? What are the priorities? Yeah, so for me, the priority is going to be on paid advertising. And I think that, um, unfortunately, you know, organic reach isn't what it used to be like on Facebook. And I always say, you know, there's kind of two ways we can look at this. We can look at it and we can get upset or we can look at it and we can kind of say, like, it is what it is. What can we do to continue our reach? And what I find is that, building audiences on Facebook is really where you want to focus your attention. So even though you may not, um, even though you may not get as many likes or as many engagements, building up a page where people are following you gives you social proof and it gives you a group of people to advertise to. Um, so we recommend that you kind of start by using both organic and paid traffic, but focus on your warm audiences first. So people who already like your Facebook page, 
people who are already visiting your website, people who are already engaging with your content. And those are all places that you can actually target with your Facebook ads. So we recommend starting there so that you actually have audiences of people that are already interested in your content that you can now add to your email list and then put out engaging content so that you continue to get you know, as much social reach as you can on Facebook. But that's where I recommend you start is with paid advertising to people who are the warmest. And then once you've kind of exhausted your warm audience, then it's time to progress into the colder or interest-based audiences that people may um, you know, be interested in your content, but don't know who you are yet. Right. Really interesting. For anybody that's watching, if you have a question, feel free to post it in the comments. I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, glad to see we got you know some people here from the chat. I see Jim is here always being silly. He said, I'd be the first to say I don't know about Facebook. That was yeah. when I was joking earlier about the whole, you know, Facebook, you know, oh, we all know how to use Facebook. Um, okay. So, great information. And, you know, we should always be building our mailing list and, and Facebook is a great way to help do that. Um, so question number three, Facebook groups are a great place to start talking to potential customers. We all know that's a great, great place to go. Where else can a new business reach their potential audience? Yeah. So this is where I talked about, you can really use the Facebook search tool to find pages that your potential audience would be interested in and then use that to actually drive content in front of those people. So a lot of times what we do right away is we run lead generation or um, list building ads to these really cold audiences, but you can actually take one of your customers, let's say your customer, um, you know, John Doe, and you can say pages liked by John Doe in the search. Now it doesn't work for everybody based on their privacy settings, but you can actually use the Facebook search to say, what pages does someone who's already a customer or is my you know, perfect customer profile, you know, so-and-so would be the perfect customer. And you can see what pages they already like. Then you can take content, whether it be a blog post or a Facebook Live or a video, run it as an advertisement to those pages that you found and actually um, you know, see if people are even interested in that before you start running the lead generation ads. So, you know, I think that Facebook groups are a great place to have a conversation where you don't have to pay, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, um, I say fortunately, because pay to play scares away um, the people who aren't serious. And it lets those of you who are serious about building your business really focus in and get some really great results. Right. Does Facebook have like an advanced search when you're, because I know at the top, you got the search bar. Twitter has an advanced search that most people don't realize it's available. Um, yeah. Does Facebook have this? So Facebook doesn't have an advanced search, but they have what's called audience insights, which is a tool you can use to do research on commonalities between interests and pages. So I could type in um, my page on audience insights and it will tell me the age, the demographic, the similar pages, the location of people who like my page, but it really only works with larger pages and larger audiences. So you already have to know something about your, your potential audience to kind of do the research with that tool. So that's the closest thing Facebook has to an advanced uh, audience search or an advanced search tool um, okay. is called audience insights. Okay. It sounds familiar. I think I've heard of that before. Uh, good to know. Um, question number four, I loved your answer to this. When is the best time to launch a new product on social media? Yeah. So it's a little tongue in cheek uh, when I posted it on, on Twitter, but basically whenever your audience is around. So we get really caught up in this. I think it's kind of a, a trap of like, we hear like the best time to post on social media is 11 a.m. because that's peak hours for engagement, um, right. you know, or, you know, and that's arbitrary. I don't I don't know if there's people saying 11 a.m., but let's just say that that they are. Um, we kind of hear that and we think, well, then I'm going to post at 11 a.m. and I'm going to get the best engagement. But let's say that you are targeting people who have a nine to five job, right? If your ideal customer is working a nine to five, they're probably not online at 11 a.m. because their lunch break is until 12 right? Or maybe you know that they um, are working at 11 a.m. And like, let's say your target is corporate people. A lot of corporate jobs can't be on Facebook during the day, right? So right. when is your ideal audience available? And I use the example of, let's say that your, your audience is parents with kids that um, are school-aged, right? 
um, you would probably not want to be launching between 3 and 5 p.m. when kids are coming home from school and dinner is happening. You probably don't want to be online at midnight because those people have already gone to bed. The ideal time for like a stay-at-home mom who has kids in school would be then that 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., that time where there's no one home, they're, they're online for themselves, and maybe that's the perfect time to launch. And I also kind of said, like, let's say you're, you know, we continue with that trend of parents, you probably don't want to launch late August when everybody's getting ready to go back to school and they're squeezing in as much family time as they can. They're back to school shopping. They're busy. Um, you know, late August to early September is probably not the best time for a product for them. So it's all about when is your customer available? When is your ideal audience available? Um, and when is the right time to be speaking to them with your offer? Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. Um, an interesting point to this, but for Twitter, and I'm curious, I, I wonder like if you've ever experimented with this on Facebook. I've tried a little bit, but I haven't really dug into the analytics to see if it worked. But I had Jay Bear on my podcast last year on my Twitter Smarter podcast. We talk about Twitter stuff, and he had this really interesting idea where if your audience, if you're B2B and your primary audience is business people, to schedule tweets like a few minutes before the top of the hour in the hopes that you get someone who's about to go in or they're in a meeting or getting ready to start a meeting and they're just sitting there and they're waiting a few minutes before the top of the hour. And what are they doing? They're whipping out their phone. They're checking Facebook and Twitter and all their different social media and hoping to, you know, catch you at that moment. So I've experimented a little bit with Facebook where I'll post something, you know, a few minutes before the top of the hour. But I feel like this is the strategy is not quite the same for Facebook. I, I could see it working on Twitter, yeah. but any thoughts on something like that if you think that would work? Yeah, you know, the and I think that Twitter now, and I'll be honest, I'm not as Twitter versed as I am Facebook versed, but I know that Twitter is very um, live feed oriented. I know that they have an algorithm that they use right. now, um, but the Facebook algorithm is is a lot more based on um, not what time you post, but who you're posting to and who's most likely to engage with your content. So it could work um, within your Facebook. If you're running a Facebook page, which if you're running a business, I highly recommend you do, um, you can actually go into your analytics and see when your people are actually online, when your audience is actually online. And that's what I would base my postings around versus like a top of the hour type strategy, which I do think would lend itself better to say Twitter or a platform that's more um, live feed based. Yeah. And that makes perfect sense because with Facebook, yeah. I mean, there so many times you don't see a Facebook post until the next day you right. know, with the way the algorithm works. Um, I was just curious what you thought about that. It was, it was really cool to apply that to Twitter. Um, I just don't see that working as well with Facebook, but uh, it's interesting for sure. Yeah. Um, let's skip over, let's skip over to question number six. Um mm -hmm. Because this one is something we just don't talk about much on on our chat. When it comes to outsourcing your company's social strategy, where does one go to find an extra pair of hands? Yeah, so I always start with referrals. Um, anytime I'm looking to hire for something, especially a social strategy, I start with referrals. So even though I know Facebook ads and I, I love to run my own Facebook ads, um, we work with a Facebook ads manager and we found them through a referral and they've been great with us. They've been for us gosh, it's probably going on two years now um, because we trust the word of people that we know. So we like to start with referrals, but I realize that not everybody has, you know, a Rolodex of contacts or people to talk to. So if you don't have referrals, the next best place in my opinion is Facebook groups. And we have found incredible freelancers, team members, um, one-off, you know, kind of task-based uh, assistants that have done incredible work for us inside of Facebook groups because you kind of have these communities that you're already a part of. Why not reach out to them and ask for the support that you need? Um, the last place that I'd recommend is um, either like Upwork or Craigslist. I actually hired my local assistant via Craigslist and we've had incredible luck. She's been great to work with, um, you know, reasonable price to get a really great pair of hands. Um, and then Upwork is a really great place for if you like, you know what needs to get done, but you have 
no idea who you're going to work with, no idea where to start. Um, they, they take care of the time tracking, the payment, all of that stuff. So you can focus on what's important to you. So there's all kinds of avenues to hire. Um, but those are my favorite in order referrals, Facebook groups, um, or communities. Like if you have a Twitter chat community that you're a part of, sure. and then, you know, finally would be, you know, reaching out on like a job board, like Craigslist or up. Yeah, I, I loved when you had mentioned Facebook groups, because I don't think that's something people really think about, like to go, because I mean, we all know people, right? And so just by posting on Facebook and just asking, you know, for a referral, I think can give really great results for someone. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. I think it's great. I think it's great. I see our friend Stacy is here. She's really awesome. She didn't make the chat today, but she's here now. And she's saying that this is quite meta that she's listening in as her partner is on the desk next to her building custom audiences in Facebook ads Love manager. It. How cool is that? Love so Stacy, go back to the hashtag to social ROI. You got to go through the tweets. Just, just go over and look at Zach's Twitter because he just, he just like killed it. It was so awesome. You're going to learn lots. So uh, glad you're here with us, uh, but we're winding down. We're getting to the end. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the beauty is the Facebook video lives on. So everybody can watch the replay later. Um, all right. So really one more question left here at the end. Um, what are your three C's of outsourcing your company's social strategy? Yeah. So the three C's are clarity, control, and communication. And clarity is basically get clear on what you need. So a lot of people say like, I'm going to outsource my Facebook ads, right? But what people don't talk about is like, when we outsource our ads, we have a strategy that we're outsourcing. We're not just like, do my Facebook ads, right? We have, yeah. um, we have a really like high level conversation with our ads person about what do we want to happen? Where do we want the budget to go? How do we want to spend? And you might be like, well, I'm not ready for an ads manager, but that same conversation should be happening whether you're hiring someone for Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, um, you know, Facebook, it doesn't matter. You need to be realizing that if you don't know what you want someone to do, they can't do it for you. So you need to get really clear on what you want, what your metrics are, what your goals are, just like with Facebook ads and be able to communicate that. So that's the second uh, C, communication, be able to communicate that clearly with what they want. Now I say that communication is actually a combination of clarity and control. Control is quite simply, you need to let go and let people do their job. So if you micromanage or you try to control everything that you've just outsourced, you're not really outsourcing, you're creating a new job as a manager. Um, but communication is like the combination of clarity and control. When you can clearly communicate, which requires clarity, what you need and let people know that you're gonna release that control and communicate to them that they are personally responsible for this new job, then you end up with clear lines of communication that get the best results. So, Clarity, control, and communication are the three C's that we use when we outsource. I love that. That is so awesome. And Stacy says communication is so key. So, so yeah, key. I think we I think we all agree with that. This has been so great, Zach. We learned so many awesome things today with you on the chat and here on the after chat. Appreciate your time. Where can everyone go to get more information about you and your company? Yeah, if you want to connect with me, you can find me at heartsoulhustle.com or Instagram. Instagram has been my jam lately. I'm over at Heart Soul Hustle on Instagram. And that is like, you know, we're working hard to build our Instagram. So we'd love to see you over there. Yeah, you're doing a great job. I've been seeing your stories and your lives that you've been doing. So great job on that. So heartsoulhustle.com. I highly encourage everyone to check this out. Zach's doing amazing things. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you, Zach. Really appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah. And thanks everybody for watching. We'll be back next week with another great chat. So until then, I'll see you out on Twitter. Bye.